Hi, my name is Fatai and I'm a current third year internal medicine resident here at Brookdale University Hospital and Medical Center. Um, I, just, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you guys for the amazing support you've given this channel, the residents of internal medicine uh, this past year. It's been an amazing year for me professionally and personally and I'm hoping it was the same for you. But the truth really is medicine and life generally is about growing, is about learning more things, about le learning new things, about you know being better every day. So whatever it is that you felt you fell short of this past year, the coming year, God willing, is another opportunity to you know to implement the things you've learned this past year. Um, so what are the things that I personally have learned this past year that I thought might be worth sharing with you guys? Uh, there's a, a few of them. Uh, I'll start first with, you know, we I think we have to take ourselves a little bit less seriously. The reason why I'm saying that is when you're in residency, you know, the demand of performing at the highest level that you can is there. But a lot of times people get overwhelmed by that expectation and eventually not really uh, get to be able to perform at that level what I'm thinking might be a better idea is to understand that you are a resident at that point and you're not you know you're not necessarily expected to be perfect you're supposed to learn continue to improve and you know be allowed to make mistakes hopefully the mistakes are not uh, uh, are, are redeemable ones uh, really the only thing to be taken seriously is the patient and you know you want to do your best to make sure you're giving the patient the best but when it comes to making mistakes making mistakes or feeling like you're not you know there at this particular level yet allow yourself to be that well, I've realized that this allows you to you know settle into your position and then gradually grow every day to be able to get to where you need to get to hopefully by the end of residency because you don't want to crash you know along the way take yourself a little bit less seriously understand you make mistakes it doesn't matter if you seem dumb on rounds or wherever the case may be you want to be able to settle in that role that you are a resident you are a student first of all and you're going to continue to learn and uh, keep doing your best every time second thing um, that I, I thought would be worth sharing is the idea of studying while you're in residency understand one thing first and foremost studying and doing research any scholarly activity during residency is going to suck you have to be able to live with that but what you do is to make sure that whatever little chance that you get you want to do it in little little bits so you want to set a goal for example in a day if you're going to do five questions or ten questions from any cube bank that you're uh, currently using that would be a goal that might be achievable if it's 30 minutes you get every day to be able to study that might be achievable as opposed to feeling like you want to do you know two hour study session every day that may not necessarily be possible because you're definitely tired the moment you're coming back from work and it's, it's, it's just not easy and uh, it's the reality a lot of us struggle with it but we have to do what we have to do when it comes to research take every opportunity you can if you keep telling yourself you know I don't have time to do this I don't have time to do that you eventually wouldn't so if somebody comes up to you and say, you know what, I have this paper that I want to write, can you write it with me? Take that opportunity and go right ahead and do it because that pretty much might be the only push you get to actually do significant scholarly activities. And it was for a lot of us, you know, uh, uh, hoping to be, uh, you know, eligible for fellowships in the future. It's, it's important that you really participate in scholarly activities. So that studying and doing research will suck, but you have to do what you have to. You have to stick it through daily, whatever small bits you can, whatever small opportunities you can to actually do it, you have to do it. Third thing, um, that I thought um, would be worth sharing, you know, and particularly practicing more in the new year is actually appreciating people more. Um, you know, in our environments, in any healthcare environment, we work with a lot of people. We work with, you know, our fellow physicians, whether it's the attendants, the residents, the nurses, you know, the techs, and all sorts of you know, non-medical staffs. 
what I realize is we tend to lose, you know, the opportunity to actually be able to gain, gain joy in, in the way that we interact with people. But a lot of times when we start to appreciate people more, when we start to express our appreciation of people more, whether it's our colleagues, our, you know, attendants or the non-medical staff, the nurses, whatever the case may be, we, we, we share in the joy of actually being on the same team. And a, a lot of times it allows us to just breathe easier. It allows us to also appreciate ourselves because in the process of appreciating somebody else, you're also appreciating yourself. So, so do that a little bit more. Do that a little bit more. Appreciate your guys. You know, if your guys are helping you out, you know, in any way, shape or form, you know, somebody covering another person because there, there, there was an emergency. Let's appreciate that. Somebody, you know, staying a little bit longer because somebody else got into some difficult situation that they weren't able to get to work in time. Appreciate that. It's, it's all about giving as, and as we give, we also get. I think that's something I want to be able to appreciate more. You know, that cleaner that comes in the call room to clean the bed or clean the bathroom, appreciate them, you know, while you're appreciating them you're able to generate good you're able to generate some you know form of joy in that process and i thought it's something worth sharing uh the next thing i'd also want to you know take into the new year i think this is very important um generally whether it's your in the beginning of your medical training whether as a re as a student or a resident or whatever, whatever the case may be uh it's very important to take ownership of our patients. I always say this, you know, to my junior colleagues and to my colleagues or whoever I, I interact with on the wards, that they're my patients first and foremost. It's not the attendance patient. As far as I'm concerned, if I'm the intern on the team, it's not my senior patient, it's my patient and every part of their health and every aspect of their care i have to be involved i'm not going to wait for somebody to make those decisions for me yes i can ask questions when i'm confused but it starts and ends with me if anything goes wrong it's my headache if anything goes you know good yes we did it it's, it's important to take ownership of your patient because just, that just drives everything it drives the the energy you put to work it drives how much you give to them it drives you taking responsibility whatever the case may be so it's very important take ownership even when you're doing procedures they're your patient you're not you know fidgeting it this is your job take ownership of all aspect of it when it comes to the patient i think that's you know worth uh, uh, uh pointing out and hopefully being able to practice in the future um the last thing i wanted to mention uh particularly is this idea that the right thing is always the right thing the right thing to do is always the right thing you know a lot of times we ask ourselves the question you know when something happens how do i proceed you know when i'm dealing with a patient what decisions how do i make decisions how do i how do i you know go about solving problems remember this the right thing is always the right thing sometimes it's easy to do the right thing sometimes it's difficult to do the right thing but the right thing will always be the right thing the right thing will always be the right thing however it is in your institution however it is in wherever you're learning to be a physician the right thing is always the right thing you would rarely go wrong with sticking with what is permitted permissible what is accepted what is beneficial for the patients the right thing is always the right thing so don't 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 confuse it don't model it up it's just a fact and it's something we have to we have to implement more and more in in our medicine a lot of times we make mistakes we're not above mistakes but remember this the right thing to do is always the right thing so it's been it's been a pleasure just you know sharing these ideas with you guys i hope we we're able to make more contents in the coming year uh god willing you know like subscribe share the videos you know this is really what medicine is about interacting and learning more every day that's why we do all the things that we do the podcast the you know the actual uh, uh lectures and everything we do the experiences so please support the channel we'll definitely definitely appreciate that i'll see you guys next time bye god bless